Hi, everyone. Digital transformation appears to be a strange animal. Most companies understand that digitization is not just an opportunity, but has become imperative for their survival. But the views on why it is needed still appear often blurred and can differ greatly. At the same time, we can see many stumble on their digital transformation journey. So how to get on with it? How to make it work? How to avoid the pitfalls? To dive into these questions, I'm glad to be joined today by two very experienced digitization practitioners. Floretta Julali, Senior Product and Marketing Executive with 18 years of relevant experience in banking, telecommunications and fintech in Europe, Asia and Africa. She's connected with us today from Egypt. Floretta, thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Michael, for inviting me. Stefan Lamoureux, C-suite level executive and project lead in digitizing top level organizations around the globe over the past 25 years, including in banking, payment systems, fintech, and more. Stefan, good morning to Canada. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Michael Kortenbusch. I'm the Managing Director of Business and Finance Consulting, and I will be moderating this session for you from Zurich. This is the first of five consecutive Ask BFC sessions on digitiz digitization of MSME finance. <clears throat> and now my first question today goes to our audience, which is connected with us from 35 countries. And the question is in the poll, which I would like to uh, put up, what do you view as a main challenge in digital transformation in the financial service industry. So please, while you choose your options and check the marks, I will uh, inform those of you who are for the first time with us at the Ask BFC session, that are, which are the three ways to ask us questions. One is through our corporate website. Second, you can also email us directly. And third, you can write us in the Q&A window at the bottom of your Zoom screen. And you can find the details on these three channels in our Zoom chat window below. We will pick up your questions from this in the window and try to answer them during the session as possible in writing or orally. So uh, we will first go through 16 collected questions one by one, and we have grouped these questions into three blocks, as you can see on the screen. First block is about setting realistic objectives and preparing for the digitization journey. And the second, uh, uh, the second one is properly plan and preparation. And the third one, execution. So these are the three blocks for our questions. And uh, with this, I think we can already conclude the poll. So if we look at the poll, uh, we see interesting results. The participants, thank you for participating, have basically everywhere uh, found um, a reason to, um, to check the box. But we see uh, leading challenges related to technology and data management say almost 50% of respondents. And then we have poor integration into overall business strategy, I think is the second and the third is internal resistance to change and also unclear objectives. I would like to ask my dear panelists, Floretta and Stefan, if you would like to comment on this um, uh, outcome, is it unexpected for you? What do you say? I wouldn't say that it is unexpected. It is actually what I have at least personally seen in quite a few organizations. Okay, thanks, Loretta. Stefan? From my side, I, I don't see major surprises. I, I would say that the technology slash data management is very high. 
which means that a lot of projects have been done as a, as a technical project, which is not the way to go for a digital transformation. Yeah, exactly. We will speak about this later. Uh, what um, you see as the true challenges are what we come to these questions soon. Thank you very much. With this, let's begin answering the questions now. And we start with block one. We have the three blocks. So realistic objectives for digital transformation journey, how to set them. We'll respond to three questions in this block. And the first one, why is the why digital transformation question still so important today? And we look forward to hearing answers from both of you, Floretta. Well, um, I'd say that digital transformation is even more important today. And it is important because everything has changed. The business landscape has changed. The customers and their demands have changed. And the tools that we use have also dramatically changed and improved. So it's fair to say that digital transformation in that sense, it can help the organization in a number of ways. It can help us reimagine our business. It can help us to reevaluate our value chain. It can help us to grab new opportunities and connect to more customers than ever before. It can help us improve dramatically the efficiency of the organization. In other words, I'd say that with it, you can grow and do fantastic things and without it you'd lag behind and sometimes miss the boat altogether. Thank you Floretta. Stefan, what would you say? I would definitely echo what Floretta said. I mean more than ever it's important and I'd say even more now with COVID uh, on top of things. I mean if you look at consumers they, they want contact free now. They don't even want contactless. So it, it's about survival. It's about reinventing your your organization to follow in your industry and uh, at the end of the day it's to be able to like i said to survive and thrive thank you uh, it uh, sounds clear that uh, there can be different benefits as you lined out but um, apparently in the in the survey in the poll we had our unclear objectives listed very high. So allow me one short follow-up question to you, uh, Stefan, on what is then the issue? It seems to be what you just said is clear that those objectives are there. So what makes up the problem with unclarity of objectives in an organization? If that is a short answer possible. Uh, I will keep it as short as possible, but unclear objectives, simply put, is that you'll have a document that's created at the senior management team level but it's not disseminated down to the, uh, the uh, worker level. This has to be a top-down exercise and has to be very well communicated and continuously communicated. And a pulse has to be taken on that continuously. It's, this is okay. really the only way. Good. Then uh, related to this, we come to the second poll question to our audience. And this question is actually related to strategy definition. And the question is, does the organization have a document which details its digital transformation strategy? And while you fill in uh, the answers, I would like to ask the second question to Floretta. How can I assess the viability of a digital transformation strategy, Floretta? Well, the, the, the first answers to the first poll are actually a great lead to um, how do we assess, assess the viability. And I'd say that you need to start with the basics and that is understanding why you are doing it. You need also a thorough understanding of your organization and where it is now so that you can move on to where you want to be. And then you can choose one of three methods or a combination of them, which are either building a small independent unit to spark up innovation within the bank or the organization. You can run experiments across the different divisions or departments, or you can have this iterative cost efficiency exercise by reevaluating your processes and then identifying bottlenecks uh, to, to value delivery. However, I would caution um, to the following that we need to make sure that this small independent unit does not act like a, a speedboat around a, a big ship and but cannot steer it to any direction at all, or not to run too many experiments in parallel and find a way to integrate them. And last but not least, definitely do not make cost efficiency an objective 
uh, and a goal by itself because it will be limiting and it will increase the chances that the bank or the organization will miss major disruptions that are coming from, from outside. Thank you, Floretta. And we, um, uh, we have, in addition to your answer, we have the results here already uh, from this. So I'd like to ask both of you, Floretta and Stefan, give a short comment on this. So um, because it's a strategy important question, uh, we see that 31% uh, don't have a document that details its digital uh, its transformation strategy. That's quite a number. 26% uh, are in, in process and 24% have is integral part of our overall corporate strategy, which is surprisingly a lot. Only 8% have a separate document. Any quick comments on that? From you, Florida. Uh, to those that have it as an integral part of overall corporate strategy, kudos to you guys. To the rest, you need to get there. Yeah, digital transformation can run, cannot run by itself on a separate document. It should not be something that is not integrated because it is a means to achieve something, it's not a goal by itself. Thank you, Floretta. Stefan? Uh, <clears throat> this tells me that more than 60% of, the, of the, the organizations are not ready and are behind the eight ball before they start. That's a big issue. Yeah, okay. So the start of the preparation is, of course, to have written objectives. That's what both say, basically. You have to have uh, clarity about this and communicate that, as you said before. Good. Let's move to question three then. How can I increase buy-in from core staff for our digital transformation strategy? Stefan? It's probably something I will repeat many times, but start with clear objectives. And why are you doing this transformation? And make sure this information is disseminated to your entire staff. And continuous and transparent communication is critical. And what you have to make sure is that um, you have multiple channels that you can get feedback from. A lot of information will not go back up to the senior leadership team often. So you need multiple channels so that this information can be funneled back. But it's about, it's about communication. It's about making sure that you answer the question uh, of the employees of like the what's in it for me. It's human nature to resist change. So how, how are you going to work on, on the culture and create a culture that embraces change? And how are you gonna create a culture that wants to move forward and is happy to, to fail and learn and fail and learn again? Thank you, Stefan. Do you think that the importance of technology is uh, overestimated? I'm also referring to the poll outcome where many organizations are, uh, indicated that the, the technology was the issue, not the culture. Very much so. I mean, unfortunately, a, a digital transformation is not about technology. Of course, there's a technical aspect to it, but it's culture and embracing change. The rest follows. Um, too many organizations do technical projects and deem this as being a digital transformation when it is not. That's a refreshing insight from someone uh, who, uh, like you, has done the whole life uh, technology projects that you say culture is before technology. But that seems to be coming out of the experience. Um, we, uh, I jump in with one of the questions we get because it just fits. We're getting already questions uh, from the audience, which is great. Um, and the question was um, regarding buy-in from core stuff. How do you define core stuff? in uh, block one. Um, I think one of you can give a short answer to that. What means core stuff? Floretta, do you want to take that one? Sure, I mean, okay, it's not a very nice thing to actually <clears throat> distinguish between core and non-core and non -core stuff. But I would say that you can use a simple way to do this and just in the journey of what you're doing or in the process or in the product of what you're doing, define those that add the most value and they will be definitely the core staff. Okay, so that doesn't have to be reflected in the hierarchy one-to-one, -one. could be also something else, but um, um, it's clear. Good. Um, with this, we move on to block two. And the, the, block, the block two is about the um, 
uh, planning and preparation of digital transformation projects. And again, uh, dear attendees, if you uh, want to write us your questions and uh, receive answers, uh, please do it in the bottom of the Zoom screen. We are getting already some questions. In this block now, we'll respond to five prepared questions. And before we um, move on with question four, uh, we have another poll here. So um, poll three, if your organization embarked on a digital transformation journey, or this is planned, how do you assess the level of preparedness of your organization to meet the expectations? So you can scale from one to 10, um, this is running, and we can have the intro question to both of you again for this block, the intro question, what are the must haves for an organization before embarking on a digitization journey? Floretta, would you like to start? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think we've already established that the first thing to do is you need to ask why, why are we doing this, and then answer that. Um, but then I also think that it's very important to start preparing yourself for a constant cycle of reimagining your future and acting and working with that in your present. And make this a company culture, turn this into a culture that everybody embraces. And then try to assess beforehand a broad view of where you are, where are your competitors, where are the disruptions coming from, um, and try to prioritize how you want or would like to, to react to, to all of this. And then you have to, to plan to institutionalize a constant and iterative change um, within the organization. And finally, it is, I think, very, very important to make this plan transparent to everyone. And I mean, absolutely everyone. So that then this is the only way that people understand and they can start to gradually uh, buy into the idea. Thank you very much, Floretta. Stefan, uh, you have the job now to compliment. Uh, some <laughs> things have been said already, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna try not to repeat. Uh, my my most important one is buy-in from the board and the senior management team to start with. This is very much a top-down exercise where the entire organization is involved in moving this forward. It goes to say, it goes without saying, like Florida said, transparent communication, continuous communication is critical. <clears throat> and answering the why are we doing this? You need to look at your market, your industry. Where is it going? How is it is it transforming itself? And it's all about creating an, uh, uh, a culture that embraces change. These are your two biggest ones. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, thank you both. So we have the result of the polling here and it looks um, like most of uh, institutions um, participating here think that uh, they are somewhere in the middle. So it's definitely not great, uh, but uh, there's also space to uh, have it been worth. So. Um, I don't know what we can say about this. Uh, I think it speaks for itself. We can leave it here. Uh, thanks for participating. It is interesting, however, if, if I may comment, Michael. Yes, please. It's very ahead. interesting, however, because um, it slightly contradicts with what pe people think that they are prepared and it's planned, and yet it wasn't quite the case with the previous two questions where, you know, they hardly, they barely have any documents or they're separate. So it's quite interesting of, you know, how people view um, this as a journey. Probably it's a question also what you assume uh, to be a definition of being prepared, right? Yeah. Maybe uh, that is also not clearly defined. And I think um, uh, this uh, session helps to define it a bit more. Good. Question five. Um, who should lead and participate in planning digit uh, digital transformation projects? Floretta? Well, the short answer to this is absolutely everyone. <laughs> that everyone should have at least an idea about the possible future or futures of uh, their own small unit or department or the company at large. However, um, to, to stress and emphasize what Stefan said earlier, that it, this is a top-down exercise, so definitely there needs to be absolute involvement from the top management, from, from the board. Because 
they are the ones that will lead their teams, but they are also the people that will institutionalize the processes and the procedures that are required in this journey. They are the ones that will set up the rules. And if the rules are not set up the right way, there isn't much chance for, for success. So definitely, amongst other things, I'd say that to give it some sense of agency, you also need to, to present it uh, as an evolutionary uh, process rather than this big, scary dinosaur that people are afraid of. So try to use nudges to alter behavior and, and build new habit, habits, which is very important. And, and use a positive approach rather than a punitive um, fashion. Talk about opportunities that lie ahead rather than the silos that you're trying to remove and ultimately allow your talents and human assets to learn and grow um, with you. Floretta, you mentioned the use of nudges in implementing digital transformation. Could you give us a short example of how that works in practice? Sure. So nudges are fantastic because they help alterations of human behavior through small positive steps. And a great way to use nudges is through sprint retrospectives, for example, where you have noticed two or three things that really work well within your group and you try and turn them a habit and bring them to the next sprint. Or another great example is, for example, to, to set a number of learning hours that you want in the organization and then say, right, well done, you've done uh, 10 hours of learning, you have now achieved this or that, or to identify those projects that have dramatically improved results and use that to, to motivate people. These are great, great ways to make people want to change and get new, into new habits. Thank you. Uh, that's clear. And we move to question six then. Uh, Floretta also goes to you. How yeah. best to make informed choices between outsourcing, in-house development and partnerships? Well, there there is no magic formula into separating between which one to choose for what and when. However, it is important to understand that the, the bank, the company cannot do everything by itself. So you need to find a balance between the three of them. I would suggest that the, the, that the company builds in those, um, everything that is core, that is very important to the core of the business. And then it, it outsources the rest, um, particularly outsourced to those that can do what you can't, uh, outsourced to those that can do things much better or much faster than you. And try to involve your partners um, because they will want to grow with you. So it will be in their best interest to try and, and, and do things uh, for you as well. So try to find a balance with these three. Definitely try to innovate more through partners because it is a very great way to inexpensively try experiments. Partnerships uh, is definitely a very important item. So um, for those of you in the audience who are interested to dive more into this topic, uh, you are cordially invited to join us for the fourth Ask BFC webinar session scheduled for September 10th making digitization happen through smart partnerships. And with this, I turn again to Stefan with question seven. Shall we drive digital transformation from within or from value chain market or both, Stefan? Um, my view is you need to, to drive this from all aspects of it. Whether it's within creating a, a culture that can embrace change and that uh, is I would say willing to move forward in uh, failing and testing and, and learning fast to your value chain where you really need to go back to first principles. Uh, much of many of the banks that have gone through have a lot of legacy in the value chain is a very complex value chain. You need to look at first principles and simplifying and reinventing your value chain, which is a monumental task but it has to be the direction that you take. And if you look at your market, it's where's your market going? Where's the industry going? If you look at the banks, they're being hit by all sides, whether it's Challenger Bank or FinTechs. So the market also defines how big of a transformation you have to do. 
looking at the market uh, to better inform decisions and um, new products, uh, new channels, um, is also a topic of our second Ask BFC webinar session, which is scheduled in two weeks from now for August 13th, Digitizing Financial Services for MSMEs. So uh, feel free to join. Question eight, which goes again to Floretta, how to identify and mitigate implementation risks at the planning stage? Floretta? Um, I think it is very important to, to plan really well. And what I mean by that is not just I want to go from position A to position B in, a, in six months or one year, but you need to have a really broad view of where you are in the competitive landscape. You need to try and identify as early on as possible where possible disruptions are coming from and then prepare for small strategies or, or tactics. How are you going to mitigate risk from uh, these disruptions or from what your competitors might be doing? Then agree to stop doing what adds value. I mean, I think a lot of organizations um, keep doing things that do not add any value and focus less on what they should be doing to increase value. And in that they get themselves into quite risky situations. Um, something else that I would suggest is try to allow for some buffer for mistakes or experiments that do not go very well so that you do not find yourself with this huge surprise that you did not prepare yourself for and then you know things turn uh, quite serious and you don't know how to to escape from it then make sure that the plan itself includes several iterations it's not a plan is not a document that is written in stone and particularly in today's world it is very, very important to make it a habit and to turn it into a culture to iterate over it, especially as things are moving or if you see or, or feel that something is going to make a, a massive impact very soon, go back to the plan, iterate, change everything that you need to change, adopt and, and then move on. Uh, last but not least, I would say that the plan needs to include KPIs that are very specifically dri driven by data because data sometimes will give us great indications early on of what picks up and what doesn't, what becomes risky and, and what doesn't. So try to, to, to determine um, KPIs that, that um, are driven by data and follow those decisions. Thank you, pretty clear. And with this, I would like to conclude the block two, which was about preparation and planning. And to make an organization fit for the digital transformation journey, uh, management has to make sure that two things are in place. First, the willingness of an organization to change, and second, its ability to change. And to have these two things in place, it should be clear to everyone that why is it the transformation being done? Second, realistic expectations have to be set. Third, organizational culture is supportive for this. The fourth, as you just lined out, Floretta, flexibility in planning. And the fifth, the right team has to be put in place to make it happen. And how to make it happen, that's now the topic of our third and final block today. And we start the final block, which is about executing digital transformation. Again, with a gentle reminder, we get a lot of questions. Thank you very much for this. So everyone who wants to ask a question, please feel free to um, post them in the window and we will try to answer them at the end of the session. And now uh, we, can, we start with question nine, which goes again to both of you. What is management's role in order to enable successful implementation of digital transformation? Stefan, would you like to start? Yes, thank you. Uh, management is the enabler. We need to be the champion of the program itself because it touches every single area of the organization, it starts at the management and uh, solid buy-in is critical. Um, the management is there to engage the employees. It's, we're there again to make sure that there's clear objectives, that it's communicated properly, that we are transparent, that we have multiple channels to get feedback. And you're there to remove obstacles because there will be a lot of obstacles, whether it's at the change level, at the culture level, and even technology level. 
this, these are the biggest aspects of where management can contribute. Thank you, Stefan. Floretta? Um, I think Stefan made some great, great points, so it's hard to add um, a lot, but I will just uh, try to, to add a couple of things. First, don't go into the journey blindfolded. Don't assume things. So try to really have a very thorough understanding of what you are getting yourself into. And I mean this at also at a personal level, at a professional level, as a colleague. Um, it is crucial also that you, you lead by example. So it, it, leading change means that you as a person also needs to accept it and you also need to, to action it out. So you need as a manager to be able to also change your ways and you need to start by changing a little bit your ways, maybe some of the methods. Um, you need to revisit your plans very, very often. Um, you need to, to uh, alter your decisions or follow something else because the data tells you to actually go with another decision from what you have previously uh, thought would be the case. But most importantly, um, I think that as managers, um, it is our job to institutionalize change. And, and I think that is crucial. I, I mentioned this in the very beginning and I will stress it again, that it is very important for us to create exactly those rules, procedures and processes that allow for this change to happen. Clear points. Thanks, Floretta. I go back with one more question to Stefan on this. And my question is, uh, how can top management, intensive involvement is requested here, you said intensive attention, uh, strike the balance between being there, but not micromanaging the whole thing, because that's also not helpful, we all know. Uh, so, Stefan, you have been in a managing role as well. How do you cope with that challenge? I, I'm, a, I'm a servant leader. As far as I'm concerned, your role as a senior leader is to make sure that you give the right direction and then you let your people do their job. You hired them because they're good at what they do. Let them do their job and be there to support them as required. It's as simple as that. Not, not simply implemented, but that's, it's as simple as that. Thank you, Stefan. We are already at question 10, which goes to Floretta. How to manage a two-speed organization? A two-speed organization is something that I have seen more often than I would have liked to. And um, it comes from a number of reasons that were clear also in the polls earlier, such as running two separate documents, a uh, company strategy, and then you run another digital transformation strategy, or you decide to apply digital tra transformation only to some of the departments, for example, only in IT without discussing or doing anything to the rest of the, of, of the business. So you very often end up with having some departments and some people flying like airplanes and then some others that are crawling essentially like snails. So these internal challenges start hampering the results, but also they, they cause a lot of friction and a lot of tension between the teams and between people and between the divisions which does not bring any, any good results at all. So to try and mitigate this, it's, it's, it's very important to involve absolutely every department and, and every division. So digital transformation has to impact and touch everyone. I would suggest to apply lean management to start with because in our processes, in our daily processes, it's very easy for each one of us to identify that we, there are some things that don't add, add any value that are totally waste and then there are things that add huge value. So try to reprioritize a little bit what we're doing and, and start sort of the transformation journey from there. And that would contribute quite a lot to, to not having these two speeds because everybody's doing something to, to improve themselves. And then obviously iterate, uh, try to integrate the work between the divisions. So try to, to create projects that integrate the work between divisions and departments as much as possible, rather than have everyone run their own digital transformation journey by themselves. Good. If I'm now a project manager, and in my organization, we have not used lean management before, what Floretta is your advice to get started with it? 
there is nowadays there's so much information available uh, on the web that is free as well i would strongly recommend um for example scrum.org it's a great source where you can find out information about all the methodologies there is a lot of theory there is a lot of practice there's cases there's videos you can use LinkedIn uh, Learning. There's also some great material there. You can use books. Um, there, is, there are two great books. There's a Lean Startup by Eric Rice and there's a Lean Bible by Craig Wetherill. They're great too. So there's quite a variety um, um, on the web and most of them are, are free as well. So start there. They're great for, for self-learning. Good. Good to know the stuff is out there. It's just about picking it and diving into. Great. Then we move to question 11. Does our organization need to adjust HR practices for digital transformation? Stefan? Uh, that's a given. I mean, you're, you're dealing with people. Transformation is people. It's culture, it's change. So HR is critical and HR needs to become a, a feedback channel for you, for senior management. And you have to think that as you're transforming the organization, quite a few areas will have to be repurposed, which means some employees will be moving to other jobs. So there's a lot of work on talent management and reskilling. And this is where a lot of effort has to be put because you want to keep your people. This is, you want to keep your assets just because of the, uh, the capital assets that you have with your employees. And you have to look at how are you going to create that plan? How do you create a future for the employees? So HR is absolutely critical in, at every level. Good to hear this statement. It matches also with, uh, with our understanding. That's why the fifth and last Ask BFC session on, the, on digitization will be on September 24th. Talent management, talent development, in the digital age, talent development in the digital age. Welcome also to that session. It's also in writing communicated with the audience. And we move to question 12, which starts with a fourth poll. So if you would please choose suitable, uh, the, uh, one of the following statements matching the situation in your organization. And while the poll is going, we will go with Floretta to answer question 12 how to choose suitable methods and tools supporting proper digital transformation implementation, Floretta? Well, agility and um, agile methods are something that can't be ignored purely for the results that they yield. Um, there are different method methodologies and frameworks such as Scrum or Kanban or Lean or design thinking or a combination of them. And they are all great in terms of what they produce and how they facilitate um, a smoother digital transition. And you can choose whichever one of them or you can choose a combination of them because at the heart they have very similar principles. They, they are all about simplicity, they are all about iterative uh, thinking and, and iterative processes. They build a lot of discipline, um, but they also instill a, a culture of creativity, um, which is great. And I have found them particularly helpful in building transparency and trust, which I think are key to all these new collaborative uh, ways and, and methodologies. So I would say don't be afraid to try any of them, any of them and then just try to fit or choose the one that best fits with your bank and, and your culture. But in principle, they all are about how to bring creativity and imagination to the routine and the processes um, of continuous change and, and iteration uh, time after time. Thank you, Floretta. That's a refreshing insight. More important than which tools are being used, it's uh, how they are used. Yeah. And with this, um, I move to the next question. But before we share the results, of our latest poll. And as it refers to your upcoming question, Stefan, I'd like uh, you to pick it up immediately and uh, 
say a few words about what you see here. Did you expect that and how you assess the situation? Um, I would expect the, uh, the second one to be a, a bit larger. It, I guess it depends also who our audience is, but if you have large incumbents, they will have a lot of issues and challenges in the transformation just because of the, the legacy that they're having to manage. Um, it's, it's refreshing to see that there are, many are facing only minor issues implementing it, which means there's good culture and there's a, there's a culture of embracing change. So it shows that there's a change, there's a turn being made. Good. That leads directly to question 13, uh, which I pass on to you also, Stefan. How to identify early warning signs for implementation risks and mitigate those? How to smell the smoke, Stefan? <laughs> well, th for me, there's two fires that will throw smoke. One is the culture shift, and the other one is resistant to, to change. And I'd, I'd say the best way to find out about the early warnings is for culture is you, you will see it right away as you get your feedback from your various channels, if the culture is changing and shifting the way you had planned. And it all goes back to communication and objective uh, driven, trans being transparent, and the senior management team being champions in changing that culture. Like Floretta said earlier, the management actually has to make sure they change before they can ask other people to change. And that's a critical step. As far as the change management itself, it's human nature to resist change. So this is where you have to make your changes much smaller, easier to manage, easier to swallow, easier to, uh, to uh, run with, and allow for failure. Allow for failure within the transformation. You have to give time for, to people to actually embrace that change and learn and they will fail. So if you allow the failure and you support them during the failure, you, you will actually accelerate your, your transformation. Yeah. And the speed of change and the scale of the change in digital transformation, I think that makes it so special um, that it's important for the management to have an eye on those early warning signs. Yeah. And with that, yeah, we move to question 14 uh, to Floretta. How can we improve our data management capacities, data management capacities, Floretta? I have to say this is one of my favorite questions because data is just, everything is about data. Everybody talks about data. Sometimes they don't know what they're talking about, however. I'd say that, yes, okay, it's very fashionable to the point where the value of a company is quite often multiplied or depleted in direct correlation with the amount and the quality of data that it, that it holds. And yes, there is both some truth and, and some fiction and some Bible type, hype to this. But I think that for a company, it is first of all important to understand and have a holistic view of what data it has and what data it needs for its journey to go to point B or to grow or to improve its efficiency. Um, and second, it needs to, to assess the, the quality of the data that it has and the quality of data that it is going to get because the, the quality of the output of the data is only going to be equal or not any better than the quality of the data we input and the data, data that we gather. And third, I'd say we shouldn't be expecting any magic to happen from data. Data will not make or break our business by and in itself. Um, and what I need, and what I mean by that is, is that, yes, it's a fantastic source to help you to, to make better decisions. But number one, as I mentioned before, then you need to follow those decisions rather than your gut feeling or your narcissistic uh, view of, of your product or service that you can't let, let go. Um, so it really needs to inform your decision. Um, if, if it doesn't, then there is no point to have it in the first place. Good. Data is a big topic. And that's why the third Ask BFC webinar session on digitization, August 27th, 10 a.m., is Managing Data in the Digital Age. Welcome also to that session everyone who's interested. Moving to question 15, 
how to manage an omni-channel network while digitally transforming. Florita, would you give us your insights, please? Sure. Um, I think that digital transformation requires that banks and organizations at large look at implementing or, or transform um, all channels, all possible channels, and not one at a time, because it can have an overall impact on, uh, on the experience of the customer, on all of the experience of the customer with the brand itself. And as such, if we have only digitally transformed or we, if we only digitize one channel and leave the rest, this is not going to be great news for our customers. And it actually can, can produce uh, opposite results um, for, for our brand uh, overall and for the product specifically. Um, if we digitize, for example, marketing and we still rely heavily on, on brick and mortar sales, similarly, this is not going to speak very highly of our, our, our bank and our products and services. But I would like also to add that omnichannel strategy is important also to, to try and, and integrate the, the strategy between us and our partner channels. So we need to have, if we're going to, to transform and if we're going to digitize, we need to, to have both ourselves and the partner working at the same level. Because if one is doing great, but the other one is very flawed, then the whole experience is again hampered and, and the results will not be too great. Good. It has to be a consistent experience for the customer. If uh, you change one channel, you also change the other. So the customer has to feel he's going to the same organization and not gets completely different treatments. That's probably also one of the conclusions of your answer. All right. Question 16 now, which is the concluding question. Um, we uh, made quite a sprint now and we are almost on time. So we have a bit of minutes left later on for some questions from the audience. What are the most critical three points for a successful digital transformation to remember for the audience? So Stefan, would you like to give it a start and Florita will add. With pleasure. Um, like I said, you know, like I'm repeating myself, but it is something that needs to be very well explained. Clear objectives with transparent and continuous communication. That's one very critical one creating a culture that embraces change and ensuring that the management are the champions that will drive and engage employees for that. And allow for failure, allow for failure for new learnings, but do it fast and small. And make sure that you don't do this as a saving exercise. This is not a cost saving exercise. These are my big points. Good. When I'm hearing be ready to fail and fail fast, then probably uh, we could add to these two, uh, uh, one more, fail often, but fail small. Uh, so which uh, is the best way of learning from failures uh, during the, the pilot phase. Good. Floretta, what uh, can you complement to Stefan's uh, final comments for the most important points? Establish that change is the way forward um, and institutionalize it. And last, of course, embrace technology. Don't fight it. Don't be afraid from it. Good. Don't be afraid. That's, um, I think, a good concluding statement. And with that, we have uh, finished the prepared questions. So uh, we have a couple of minutes left to run through the others. So I take them from the top here uh, and we'll see what we can do with this. Question one, actually there were many questions, but let's see what we can do. Which digital infrastructures are needed to enable SMEs to access and use effectively productivity enhancing digital instruments? Wow, that's a question, right? So the question about digital infrastructures that are needed to, um, to help MS SMEs to improve their efficiency. Um, who wants to take that and give it a short shot because we have a couple of questions. Um, if I can, I, I can take that if mm -hmm. you don't mind. Yes, please, Floretta. I, I think SMEs, what they lack is that they are smaller organizations. They're not, um, they're not very big. They don't have a lot of staff. So definitely for them, any kind of infrastructure 
that helps them scale um, and especially um, in terms of, of maintaining costs at, at, um, at uh, controllable levels would be absolutely great. So um, particularly things around digital marketing could be great. Um, not investing too much on uh, on uh, uh, servers and you know um, and moving into cloud solutions, for example, these are great things that really enable SMEs um, to 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 get more effective and and more productive um, on their way. And, and definitely, if they if they could uh, try to 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 partner up with as many. Uh, as many other partners, so look into open API frameworks. Yeah, if I, if I can add a point to that, whether it's an SME or a large corporation, um, going cloud first is a quicker and simpler way to go, especially if you have very little infrastructure in place. Uh, going for software as a service for specific areas, whether it's your ERP, your finance, your HR, or whether it's your digital marketing, that's one big portion. The other portion is definitely working with partners. There are many people that do things much better than you do. And you should take micro apps or mini apps from other players, other top players. And it's about like a Lego, uh, a Lego mechanism. It's about snapping them on and making sure that they can work together. Thank you both. There are a couple of more questions from the same um, from the same uh, person here on SMEs, which we will answer in written, and there are two which we can answer in the data session uh, about uh, data. So uh, please bear with me on that, because then we can run a few other uh, questions from other participants. And the third one is this one: Please define digital journey. What is the starting and the ending point of this journey? Thanks. I think, um, yeah, any one of you can take it. I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah. OK, go on. Um, well, first, there's no end. Let's start with that. This is a journey. So you will be on that journey for many months, many years to come. You're transforming. And you will keep transforming because the industry will keep transforming. Technology will keep transforming. This is a continuous reinvention. And if your organization can follow that and embrace that change, you will definitely be uh, in front of your competitors. Yeah. Good. If, mm -hmm. if I can just add one thing, um, I mean, embarking on a journey that is constantly uh, taking the company through change and you know evolving, that's fine. But also bear in mind that the digital journey also includes something that we haven't seen before, that something that includes not just selling to people, but we are now selling to algorithms. So bear that in mind um, when, you have, um, when you have your digital journeys. Good, thank you. We can take one or two more questions to finish on time. And I'm jumping, I'm uh, going to question five now. Uh, but uh, realistically, probably, uh, it says here, IT, business, sales, and risk will want to lead depending on the project. How do you manage this? Uh, I think Stefan, we want to hear you on this. Well, like, like I said earlier, it's a top-down exercise. So there, there does need to be a solid plan of how you want to move forward, but it has to be very loosely decoupled because some portions of the organization will move much faster than others. Um, whether it's sales that want to drive, uh, a new sales funnel uh, management, or whether it's HR that wants to drive a new way of onboarding employees, every single department adds to the equation. So it's not one, one department that drives more than, than others. Good. Actually, yeah. it goes, if, if, right up, please. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, if, I think this relates very much to what we discussed earlier. It is very important that digital transformation touches everybody and it can't be led by only one part of the organization. It's not, it's not right. Um, you can't definitely you can't have it run it by itself because 
you know, we need to have some sort of purpose, some sort of business need, you know, whether it's coming from internally uh, from the organization or outside, it doesn't matter. But, uh, but then at the end of the day, you also need to, what you need, however, is to prioritize that for where you are and where you want to go, which one of the projects coming from business sales risk are more important. So does IT go ahead with implementing this one first, this one second, this one third. So everybody gets on board. It's just a matter of moving them up and down in the priority list. Yeah. Good. Um, we had a question six, partnerships and outsourcing versus costing. So how do you manage all three? Um, I don't know, uh, Floretta, if you can give a, you had that question, I think a very short answer on that. Uh, then we, um, uh, we have to wrap it up basically after that. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that for um, costing is okay. It's something that's quite interesting because a lot of people are scared of, you know, to choose to outsource or to partner um, because of the cost involved. I have found that when you are actually um, digitizing through partners, they're willing to take a big chunk of, of the cost themselves. So it's a, it, it can be great for, for sharing. Um, so you don't have to bear all the costs yourself. And then in terms of um, outsourcing and costing, I'd say it's always, you, you just keep in mind the value that you are getting. Um, so at the end of the day, the cost has to make sense for the value that you're getting. It doesn't, this is what's the most important. Um, if, if what you're getting uh, if you get if you get a great ROI, then yes, okay, go ahead and do it. If not, then there's no point. Just don't do it. Good, good. Thank you. Uh, there are a few other questions which we will answer in writing or during the next session. So I come to the conclusion of our first BS BFC session on digitization today. And uh, my short summary of this would be that uh, we have uh, we have seen ten. Five years ago, digital transformation uh, as an opportunity. And today we understand it's not anymore, it's imperative. So we have to do it, uh, we have to go through it. And it's not a question of if, but it's a question of how. And to get this how right, uh, we have heard now from Floretta and Stefan in the last 60 minutes that a number of uh, key success factors have to be in place. And I'm just lining out three of them, which got stuck in my head. And the first is a top-down approach, uh, engaged leadership from the executive level and the board is absolute key. And the second one is prepare your team and organization for the journey. So management needs to make sure that the willingness and ability to change at good level in order to meet expectations and mitigate the implementation risks. And third, do not lose sight of your customer. Do not lose sight of your customer because digital transformation is largely perceived as a complex internal exercise and it's very easy to get distracted. So, but your business will only uh, have a benefit from this uh, if your customer is better off with your services after the changes have been implemented. And this is a short summary. So thank you everyone for being with us today on this first of five consecutive SPFC sessions. Thank you first of all to our global audience for joining us. A big Big double thank you to our two speakers, Floretta and Stefan, for investing your personal time in the preparation and delivery of this session. Very well done. Thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Uh, and finally, thank you to our BFC webinar support team, making this virtual event happen today. If you would like to reach out to BFC or to Floretta or Stefan directly, you can find the contact details in the Zoom chat window now. And I'm announcing now uh, the next Ask BFC session in two weeks from now. So digitizing financial services to, MSME, uh, to uh, MSMEs. And there I will dive into the topic with three experienced practitioners who will look at how to make the customer happy by getting things right with respect to products, business process management, and delivery channels. We much hope to see many of you here again and we have a further four webinars in our digitization uh, series to follow. So please visit our corporate website for more information and podcasts of answers from this, uh, which will be posted soon. And when you leave this session, you will see a, see a short questionnaire 
which we would like you to complete because it will help us in the team to improve the sessions further uh, with your feedback and your suggestions. And finally, if you uh, have liked this session, don't hesitate to drop a good word on this webinar um, to uh, your network and tell about the great people you have met here today. And with this, I say goodbye for myself, Michael Kortenbusch, the BFC support team, and our distinguished panelists. We hope to see you again at the next session. And thank you for joining us today. We are on time. We are. Bye-bye.